Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you very much uh, for joining us here today for our stakeholder kickoff meeting for the Powder River Basin Core CM project, uh, advancing strategies for carbon ore, rare earth element, and critical mineral resource development in the nation's largest coal producing basin. Uh, my name is Erin Phillips. I'm a senior research scientist here at the University of Wyoming School of Energy Resources, and I'm leading the Powder River Basin Core CM project. So just to let you know about the uh, meeting format for today, this is a webinar format. Uh, I will be presenting an introduction to the project and then task leads from the University of Wyoming will be giving overviews of each task. Uh, all current project partners, stakeholders, uh, and uh, interested parties have been invited to this webinar, as well as personnel from the Department of Energy. Uh, we ask that you please submit questions uh, via the Q&A function on Zoom, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. If we don't get to all questions, we will follow up with you uh, by email after the, after the webinar. This webinar will, is also being recorded, and it will be posted on the School of Energy Resources website. So this acknowledgement and disclaimer uh, just states that this work is supported by the Department of Energy and that the views and opinions of the authors of this presentation uh, do not necessarily reflect those of the US government or any agency thereof. During today's webinar, I'm going to give you an introduction to the project and talk about our project objectives. Um, I'll discuss why the Powder River Basin is a prime place to develop uh, core CM industries and the anticipated benefits to the Powder River Basin. As I said, we'll go over the different tasks that are involved in the project. I'll provide an overview of the timeline and some project events, and then wrap up by discussing opportunities for stakeholder engagement. So first of all, what is core CM? Uh, core CM stands for carbon ore, rare earth elements, and critical minerals. Carbon ore includes coal, coal byproducts, coal waste streams, and coal ash. The rare earth elements uh, are the 15 lanthanide series chemical elements shown here on the periodic table in this row, um, and usually also includes scandium and yttrium because they have uh, sim similar chemical behaviors. The critical minerals, or CM, are a list of 35 mineral commodities, uh, many of which are individual chemical elements, also shown in the periodic table, um, that were identified in 2018 by executive order. The rare earth elements as a group are on the critical mineral list, and they're a major focus of the core CM project, but all of the critical minerals will be considered in the project. So the core CM initiative is funded by the United States Department of Energy and is focused on catalyzing basin-wide economic growth and job creation around all parts of the carbon ore, rare earth element, and critical mineral value chains. Projects will be managed by the Department of Energy's Office of Fossil Energy National Energy Technology Laboratory, or NETL. Uh, earlier this year, in April of 2021, the Department of Energy awarded $19 million for 13 Corsium projects that are based in traditionally fossil fuel producing regions across the United States. The Powder River Basin Corsium project will receive approximately $1.5 million in federal funds with cost share provided by the University of Wyoming School of Energy Resources, the Wyoming Energy Authority, and the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology. This is a two-year project that began on September 1st of 2021. So a prime objective of the Powder River Basin Core CM project is to provide an economic benefit to the Powder River Basin of Wyoming and Montana by stimulating new resource development centered around the nation's largest coal mines. The Powder River Basin is home to a highly trained workforce, existing coal technologies, energy infrastructure, and wide public acceptance of energy technology, all of which will be a leverage to produce strategic plans within the core CM project that maximize the development potential of core CM resources. And on a broader scale, the core CM project will offer a low cost pathway to the national security benefits associated with core CM industries. 
And very importantly, uh, this project will bring together a committed, committed network of stakeholders from the Powder River Basin of Wyoming, Montana, and beyond. So at this point, I'd like to recognize, recognize and thank the project team members, stakeholders, and each of you for joining this call. Um, our stakeholders include industry, academia, nonprofit organizations, economic development groups, governmental groups, national laboratories, state geologic surveys, and statewide agencies. Shown here are the logos of uh, stakeholders that provided letters of support for our proposal. And I recognize that there are many others on this call um, who have provided support and shown interest in the project. And we will gladly um, include your logo here and we are happy to welcome all stakeholders to the project. Um, we are really committed to growing this list of stakeholders and providing connections across the core CM value chain. So we hope that by the end of this project, we have to use three slides to display all of the logos of our stakeholders. Uh, the Powder River Basin Core CM project includes six areas of focus, and those are basin-wide assessments of core CM resources, assessments for the reuse of waste streams, strategies for infrastructure industries and business, technology assessment, development and field testing, plans for technology innovation centers, and strategies for stakeholder outreach and education. And although this project is largely focused on carbon ore resources, the project team will also consider um, other resources and waste streams that could enhance basin-specific core CM economics, including the Bear Lodge complex on the eastern edge of the Powder River Basin, uranium and vanadium resources, bentonite waste streams, and oil and gas produced waters. So the project really aims to inventory all potential core CM waste streams and resources that could contribute to the core CM industry in the Powder River Basin. So with that introduction to the project, um, I'd like to take a step back and discuss some of the driving principles behind core CM research and development. Uh, rare earth elements and critical minerals are used in many uh, different products, including magnets, uh, lasers, fluorescent lighting, uh, batteries, aircraft engines, and many others. And the rare, the rare earth element value chain is shown on the left. It starts with exploration and mining followed by processing, beneficiation, separation, and purification. Products uh, are made on the downstream steps of the value chain uh, and include uh, processing, alloying, and manufacturing. So the Powder River Basin Core CM project uh, will explore opportunities around all parts of this value chain. Core CM research is very important for the economic and national security of the United States. China has been the dominant supplier of rare earth elements to uh, global markets since 1988. Within the last 10 years, China has restricted rare earth element exports resulting in price volatility. Several domestic projects are focused on diversifying supply, but domestic purification and processing of rare earth elements is limited. Additionally, the United States imports more than half of its annual consumption of 31 of the 35 critical minerals. Therefore, domestic advancements um, to all parts of the rare earth element and critical mineral value chain are critical. The other component of the Core CM initiative is to address um, products made from coal derived sources or carbon ore to products research. Coal based sources can be utilized to make many different products from high value nanomaterials and carbon fibers to high volume building materials. And over the last several years, uh, research at the University of Wyoming Carbon Engineering Program uh, has uh, provided insight into the unique properties of Powder River Basin coal and how it can best be utilized. So the Powder River Basin is a hub for coal to products research and the Core CM project will help to support existing pro programs in the Powder River Basin and promote novel research in this space. And now I'd like to focus on why the Powder River Basin is a prime place to develop core CM related industries. First of all, more than 40% of the coal produced in the United States comes from the Powder River Basin. And the original coal resource is estimated at about 1.1 trillion short tons. Wyoming coal is shipped to power plants in 29 states and utilized in 113 coal fired electricity generation units. 
So this represents a great opportunity to develop core CM related methods in the Powder River Basin that extends that extend to other parts of the country. It also means that Powder River Basin resources represent a significant amount of the coal byproduct resource in the United States. Due to the thick coal seams in the Powder River Basin and surface mining techniques, the Powder River Basin has some of the lowest coal production costs in the United States, improving economics of rare earth element and critical mineral extraction from carbon ore. And importantly, the Powder River Basin is home to a robust energy infrastructure, highly trained workforce, motivated stakeholders, and a supportive regulatory framework. Additionally, a number of existing technology centers exist in and near the Powder River Basin, which are supported by private, state, and federal funds. These centers are dedicated to developing and field testing energy technology and include the Wyoming Innovation Center, or WIAC, in Gillette, owned and operated by Energy Capital Economic Development. This is a public-private research to commercialization facility designed to conduct scale-up research for rare earth elements, critical minerals, and advanced carbon products. The University of Wyoming Center for Carbon Capture and Conversion is focused on supporting existing markets and finding novel non-energy uses for Wyoming coal. Sheridan, Wyoming is home to Ramico's Carbon Advanced Materials Center, or ICAM, which will host bench to pilot scale applied research projects aimed at commercialization and coal commercialization of coal-based products. And I also have included the Wyoming Integrated Test Center, or ITC, at Basin Electric Power Cooperative's Dry Fork Station Coal Fire Power Plant. Uh, this is located outside Gillette and is designed to develop commercially viable uses for carbon dioxide emissions. The ITC is funded in part by the state of Wyoming and this public private partnership provides a very valuable roadmap for the, establish for the establishment of technology innovation centers in the Powder River Basin. In addition, um, a number of established economic development programs exist in the Powder River Basin, providing a strong base from which to grow an integrated corsium industry. And this is not an exhaustive list of the economic development programs um, that are listed, but some great examples are the Carbon Valley Initiative in Campbell County, Wyoming, programs facilitated by the Upton Wyoming Economic Development Board, and programs sponsored by the Southeastern Montana Development Corporation. And also, it's very important that um, the, the Powder River Basin is, is advantageous because the geochemistry of coal and coal byproducts in this region is well characterized. Since, 26, 20, since 2016, the Center for Economic Geology Research at the University of Wyoming has been studying the rare earth element content of Powder River Basin coal and coal byproducts. Um, and this really will provide the backbone uh, for our resource assessments of and geologic models in the core CM project. Our collaboration with Powder River Basin coal mines has made this possible, uh, allowing us to collect a number of coal cores, uh, high wall samples, and coal ash from uh, mines and uh, coal fired power plants across the basin. Uh, the, the UW School of Energy Resources has also been very fortunate to collaborate with the National Energy Technology Laboratory on other projects to address rare earth element extraction from Powder River Basin coal ash. And that is a project under the direction of Christina Lapano and Mengling Stockman at NETL. And to contribute to the rare earth element sedimentary resource assessment method, or REE said method, uh, associated with the cores of opportunity program, uh, under the direction of Kelly Rose, Scott Montross, Tom Tarka, Bert Thomas, and their team uh, at, at NETL. And so Corsium uh, resource assessments will really benefit from a st strong technical base uh, that we've established and that others have established in the Powder River Basin. So the anticipated outcomes of the project that are most relevant to the Powder River Basin are as follows. Uh, number one, to develop a work, workforce training programs to support Corsium related industries. Number two, to connect stakeholders across the Corsium value chain from all parts of the Powder River Basin. And number three, to provide support for established technology, economic development, and scientific programs, as well as produce strategic plans uh, for future programs. And last, 
and very importantly, to provide pathways for energy diversification in the Powder River Basin. And so this project is broken down into a series of tasks that parallel the areas of focus that I already outlined. Those are listed here. And at this point in the presentation, uh, task leads are going to introduce each of these tasks and uh, their partners for each task. So I have the privilege of going first to introduce my task because I am the task lead for the basin-wide assessment of poor CM resources. And I will be leading this task in my capacity as a geologist here at the Center for Economic Geology Research. Um, the areas of focus under this task are development of a basin-wide resource assessment for the Powder River Basin, development of a characterization and data acquisition plan, development of an initial geologic model, and the aim of this model will be to better understand the geologic processes that concentrate rare earth elements and critical minerals, in particular stratigraphic intervals or geologic formations. And we are also very interested in better understanding the associations of rare earth elements with, um, with clays and clay minerals. And so that topic will be examined in detail by uh, Sophia Stewart and John Kazuba in the University of Wyoming Geology Department. Our task partners on the assessment task are, of course, the Center for Economic Geology Research. And our group includes a number of talented geologists and engineers including Mr. Gavin Bagdonis, who is a panelist on the webinar today, and Mr. Garrett Gay. Uh, our other partners are the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology, the University of Wyoming Department of Geology and Geophysics, Los Alamos National Lab, and the Wyoming State Geological Survey will be um, advising us in this task as well. The outcomes of the basin-wide assessment of Corsium resources are that um, document that will that will assess the Corsium resources in the basin. This will um, this will um, address resource availability and volumes of coal and associated sediments, coal byproducts, and other um, Corsium bearing resources. The characterization and data acquisition plan is meant to identify gaps that must be filled to produce geologic models that can help us predict economic rare earth element and critical mineral deposits. Data contributions uh, will be made to the National Energy Technology Laboratory's Energy Data Exchange uh, in support of their rare earth element um, resource assessment method. And uh, the last outcome is that we're happy to support um, the University of Wyoming graduate student research publications of uh, Sophia Stewart and the University of Wyoming Department of Geology. And so with that, I will pass it on to the next uh, task leader, who is uh, Mr. Charles Nye. Good morning, I'm Charles Nye, and um, I'll be leading the task, uh, Basin-Wide Strategies for Reuse of Waste Streams. Now, this task supports the one that Aaron just described, um, and uh, is going to be covering materials that are not part of that task. The areas of focus um, are going to be engaging with all of you on this call um, and others uh, off this call. We're going to be looking at all aspects of waste streams that are produced in the Powder River Basin or might be produced as a result of realizing the potential of the rare earth, uh, the core CM resources that Aaron described. So as part of this, we're going to identify you on this call and others like you, um, anyone that you refer us to, uh, we'll be adding. So we'll be identifying those partners for future R&D projects. Uh, we're going to develop a waste stream reuse plan, which I'll talk about on the next slide. And we're going to, because we're honest about our abilities, identify challenges and potential solutions to implementing that waste stream reuse plan. We know that no plan is perfect and we need to uh, be open to modification of that. Uh, this is going to be supported by uh, the School of Energy Resources, the Center for Economic Geology Research, the Center for Energy Regulation and Public Policy Analysis. Next slide, please, Aaron. And so this uh, plan revolves around uh, two ideas, two possible waste streams. There are waste streams that currently exist in the Powder River Basin, which we need to understand what they are, how much of them there is, and how easily we can get to them and move them around. And that doesn't just mean physically moving around, that means the policy matters as well as the infrastructure and economic considerations to moving something around 
uh, these particular waste streams might be difficult to transport. And so we recognize that and that will be part of our waste stream reuse plan. The other uh, aspect of this is going to be figuring out how to handle waste streams that might result from realizing the potential of the core CM resources that Aaron's uh, task um, described previously will generate or may generate. And so the goal here is to realize this blue and red uh, diagram in the bottom. Uh, we want to figure out ways to reuse the waste streams generated by the previous task to avoid disposal costs. And we wanna find ways to integrate waste streams generated from elsewhere um, on the blue side of that diagram uh, to enhance the extraction uh, that Aaron described. And this is gonna involve an awful lot of stakeholder uh, engagement and outreach to figure out all of the people who could contribute and then fit them together. So we're taking all of the puzzle pieces in the powder river basin and fitting them together in the most optimal way. Thank you, I'm done, Aaron. Thank you, Charles. I will pass it to uh, Kip Coddington. Uh, thank you, Charles, and thank you, Dr. Phillips. So my name is Kip Coddington, and I have, um, I'm, I'm with SER, and I have the privilege of leading the task entitled Basin-Wide Strategies for Infrastructure, Industries, and Business. And this task really has three areas of focus. One is conducting an inventory, secondly, doing an assessment, and then thirdly, a, a gap analysis. So taking those again in order, we will begin by um, conducting an inventory of existing businesses and infrastructure assets in the Powder River Basin that, uh, that we believe would be relevant for this new industry. Secondly, we will do a baseline assessment of the Corsium supplies, industries, and business and infrastructure again in the PRB based upon the, the inventory that was conducted in the first step. And then lastly, we will be conducting a gap analysis to identify additional investments that the basin must make to attract an economically and environmentally sustainable core CM industry. And we are privileged to be teamed with this task on um, with a lot of good, a lot of good friends. Um, and, and of course, we're working with a lot of folks in SER. We're also working with Campbell County in, in the state of Wyoming, uh, the Energy Capital Economic Development Organization, also again up in Campbell County and Southeastern Montana Development Corporation. And again, I just want to give a, a shout out of, of thanks to, to friends and colleagues in Campbell County, because we are going to have a, a significant head start on this task because of a lot of the work that is that has already been done in in that region from from carbon valley and the economic development and diversification efforts that have been underway in that part of, of the state in the region for literally many many years next slide please so in terms of outcomes so at the at the end of this process we will be preparing a, a report that will summarize the, this task and our conclusions and findings and recommendations that report will include a socioeconomic analysis of the benefits of a corsium industry in the prb we will also identify pol uh, policy matters that may affect implementation of corsium in industries in the region we will identify infrastructure gaps uh, that would be needed to make this vision uh, a commercial reality in the region. And lastly, we, we will be drafting a commercialization plan for this industry. So, so I wanna emphasize again, um, consistent with SER's applied research mission, yes, we are sitting in an academic environment, but we really do have a very pragmatic commercialization focus. So at the end of this task, we, we really do wanna have an action plan that is commercially relevant and financeable and the like that can move this forward in the, in the real world. Um, in terms of community and coalition outreach activities, we do plan on some networking and collaborative opportunities at annual stakeholder forums. Um, obviously, some of this will be subject to the pandemic, I imagine, uh, so, so we'll see how that goes, but they're currently planned for the spring of 2022 and the spring of 2023. Um, and again, as I previously noted, we will be building upon the significant work in this area that has already, already been done. So. We are not going to be reinventing the wheel. We're going to start with the great work that already exists and to the best of our ability with our teammates, move it forward. And that concludes my presentation, Dr. Phillips. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kip. I'll pass it to uh, Fred McLaughlin. 
Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Uh, my name is Fred McLaughlin. I'm the interim director for the Center of Economic Geology Research here at the School of Energy Resources. And I'll be the lead for the technology assessment, development, and field testing task. Now, this task has four key areas of focus. Uh, the first key area of focus will be to assess innovative and sustainable mining technologies that are most suitable to PRB feedstocks. The second key focus area will be to assess commercially proven and innovative separation and concentration technologies, again, relative to P PRB ore, ore types. Uh, the third key focus area will be to identify the best opportunities for developing value-added products based on Powder River Basin resources and the previously identified technologies um, that we've, we've discovered or identified in the other key focus areas. Last but not least, we're going to take a look at adaptability by assessing all the technologies identified relative to ISO standards. Um, I'd like to point out the fact that I'm lucky to have very strong task leads and partners uh, with respect to these assessments. Uh, in addition to the Center for Economic Geology Research folks like Aaron, Davin, and Charles, who've already uh, uh, introduced themselves. Uh, we have Los Alamos National Laboratory, uh, Battelle, and folks uh, and professors from the University of Wyoming Department of Chemical Engineering. Uh, we also uh, need in industry partner input here in advisory roles, and I'll talk about that uh, briefly on the next slide. Next slide, please, Aaron. Thank you. So we see three key outcomes uh, developed under this task. So the first one is focused on those technology assessments, uh, wherein we will define those technologies, the mining, the exploration, the processing, the products that are most applicable to Pot River Basin resources. Um, and, and from that, we'll then work to identify both feedstocks and field sites that are suitable for future field tests. Um, and, and that'll be exciting to see all that married and, and share all that with uh, all of you one day. The second uh, major outcome, again, relates back to the need for industry advisory roles. So we will develop a technology transfer workshop. Again, we're reliant on outcomes and definitions from other tasks, specifically those uh, resource assessments that both Aaron and Charles identified. Uh, we will work to build a technology transfer workshop. It'll be open to everybody on the line, all core CM stakeholders. Uh, COVID dependent, it'll be planned for winter 2020 or winter 2023. Uh, and again, we hope to get uh, feedback from all the folks on the line here that can help guide us with respect to their expertise. Uh, last but not least, one of the primary outcomes we always like to tout is the fact that we are helping uh, students at the University of Wyoming, in this case, Miss Anastasia Barnes, uh, whose advisor in chemical engineering is Katie Dong May Lee. So thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you. Our next presenter is Scott Quillinen. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Dr. Phillips. Uh, my name is Scott Quillinen. I'm the Senior Director of Research for the School of Energy Resources. And I will be co-leading this task with Richard Horner, who is pictured here. And in fact, when Richard is able to join the project more, um, he'll be taking the, the full lead on, on this task. But it's a privilege to be here today and to, to talk about this, this task that we've, that we've planned here. So as Aaron had mentioned earlier, um, there's several technology innovation centers that are already operating in the basin and in the region. So this task seeks to bring in a third party to help us identify the strengths and expertise of those existing technology innovation centers, and then integrate and match those strengths to uh, the research gaps that are being identified in all the previous tasks. So it's understanding what we need to learn more about from an exploration standpoint, from a processing standpoint, from a business commercial standpoint, and then we can use those to develop strategies for either expanding the existing innovation centers that are already present or developing new innovation centers for the region. Um, so the task partners here, it's gonna be led by the School of Energy Resources. Like I said, Mr. Richard Horner, who's pictured here, um, the Center for Carbon Capture and Conversion, um, the Center for Economic Geology Research, and the third party uh, folks that we brought in as BSI Energy Ventures. So next slide, please. 
And like I said, the, the goal is to really understand what we have, understand what we're missing, and then develop a plan to address uh, those needs and bring it into the basin so we can continue the research and innovation. And really, we're, we're going to be focused on pairing those technology innovation centers with workforce development programs to help stand up this new industry. So thank you, Dr. Phillips. It's a privilege to be on this project. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'll turn it over to Christine Reed. Great. Thank you, Dr. Phillips, and good morning, everyone. Um, I am Christine Reed. I'm our Director of Outreach here at the UW School of Energy Resources. I am co-leading this task with my incredible colleague, Ms. Emma Jane Alexander, who serves as the manager for the Shell 3D Visualization Center. Uh, Ms. Alexander, who is pictured here, um, brings a wealth of uh, technological and innovative experience to this project, so I'm really pleased to be working with her on it. The primary focus of our task is to um, gather a lot of information about what needs to be done to educate and develop a workforce training plan uh, for the state of Wyoming, and then to also share our information with all of you. Um, we'll be working to develop a workforce and educational training plan, and as well as methods to uh, get that information out into the community. Um, already building off of existing makerspace technology, we hope to uh, develop content that we can use um, and facilitate that information. Um, additionally, we'll be developing a data sharing infrastructure and communication platform for our project stakeholders. Uh, we have already created a website where we can start to house some of this information, and we'll be working closely with some of the other task leads to help facilitate their information as well. Uh, we are really excited to be working with Gillette College as they already have existing infrastructure for education and workforce training. They'll be our primary task partner and we will also be working with the Wyoming Energy Authority in an advisory role. So, next slide. So as I mentioned, part of this is gathering information. Uh, we'll primarily be assessing the needs and methods uh, to produce our educational and uh, workforce training plan. And so we'll be reaching out to a lot of our, our stakeholders in the community to find out what will best facilitate this. Um, additionally, it, in terms of our outreach, uh, we hope to make sure that everyone is included on everything going on in this project. So we will hold two annual stakeholder, stakeholder forums, excuse me, um, uh, which will be open to all of our stakeholders where we can share whatever um, updates we have on the project or in the, uh, the uh, investigation of our CORSIUM project. Um, we will also be uh, doing more targeted webinars. Uh, we have one already on the books that we'll share later in this presentation where um, anyone can join and learn more about the project. Um, and then finally, we'll be uh, working on that makerspace development and I, um, I will, we're happy to share more about that later on. So I apologize, I'm not a great public speaker, but um, I look forward to working on this project and uh, getting information out into the community. All right, thank you very much. And thank you to all of the, the task leads. It's really a privilege to be working with such a strong team. And I'm going to wrap up with one more task summary here. This is project management and data integration. And I will be working on this uh, task with Scott Quillinen. Uh, the areas of focus for, for this task are a summary of environmental justice considerations, summary of economic revitalization and job creation outcomes, and an environmental safety and health analysis for products proposed to be manufactured from CORSIUM resources. And we'll also be managing um, the data and the any samples that are collected in this project. So the outcome of, of this task is an integrated strategic plan, which will pull together all of the strategic plans, analyses, and reports produced in the tasks that have just been described. Uh, a number of different entities here at the University of Wyoming School of Energy Resources will be responsible for this integrated strategic plan, but we will be receiving input from, from all of our project partners and stakeholders to put this together. So just in the last few slides here, I'd like to wrap up with a basic timeline of, of what we have planned for the project. 
Um, and what we have already done for the project, we submitted our proposal to the Department of Energy on uh, January 5th of this year. We were uh, notified of our selection in April and the project started on September 1st. And here we are today at our stakeholder kickoff meeting. Uh, in addition to quarterly reporting and other milestones uh, that we are responsible for, um, we will provide an interim report to the Department of Energy one year after the project start date, <clears throat> and then a final report to the Department of Energy at the end of the two year project. And I'd like to wrap up here really emphasizing um, ways for stakeholders to be involved in the project. So we mentioned a number of times that we are planning two stakeholder forums tentatively planned for the spring of the next two years and technology transfer workshops that are tentatively planned for the winter of the next two years. So uh, uh, again, we, we really appreciate your attendance today and look forward to your, to your feedback in ways that um, you would like to be involved in the project. Um, the, um, you can expect details soon on these um, stakeholder forums, and we, we hope that they can be in person. We'd really like to be able to put everyone in the same room for, for information exchange and, and making connections, but that, that is COVID dependent. Um, Christine mentioned a number of these resources that will be developed during the project, um, workforce training and educational content, a number of different data sharing platforms, and outreach programs uh, sponsored by the University of Wyoming and other project partners. We already have a website up with project updates and information, and uh, this webinar will be posted uh, at that address after we have completed the webinar today. And if you are, if you received uh, reminders or announcements for this webinar, you are on our contact list, so you will continue to receive project update emails and announcements. And the last thing I would like to talk about in, in terms of stakeholder engagement um, are these technology transfer workshops. Um, so these will focus on specific technology themes and information gathering within themes and between themes. Um, so after we're uh, done with the workshop or with the webinar today, we are going to send out a short survey uh, to all of you. Um, and this survey is really to gather information about about each stakeholder's desired level of participation in the project and identify how we can best involve each of you in the, in the project. For the technology transfer workshop, we have initially identified six technology themes, and these are carbon ore to products, advanced mining techniques for rare earth elements and critical minerals, rare earth element critical minerals extraction and processing, rare earth element critical mineral utilization and manufacturing, basin-wide infrastructure, and community outreach education and workforce development plans. And we are certainly open to adding additional technology themes to this list. The survey that you will receive will ask you under which theme or theme your group or your organization fits best. Um, and all stakeholders will receive an invitation to the technology transfer workshops but we do have additional opportunities um, to participate in these technology transfer workshops, which could include leading sessions under one of these themes or assisting in the planning and the implementation of these workshops. Uh, so we very much appreciate your feedback on the survey. I want to um, emphasize that um, by completing the survey, you're not committing to anything. It's just solely to gauge uh, interest and to help us be organized about how to best involve stakeholders. And we'd also appreciate if you let us know about other stakeholders who might like to be involved in the project, because we really, we really want to get the word out. And as Christine mentioned, we have a live webinar planned for Monday, November 15th, uh, that will be put on by the School of Energy Resources, um, describing uh, rare earth element and critical mineral development in Wyoming. We have a number of panelists lined up who will discuss conventional and unconventional rare earth element sources and processes, a summary of the rare earth element market, uh, current rare earth element law and policy, and opportunities for rare earth element development in Wyoming. So you are invited uh, to this live webinar and can go to the School of Energy Resources website to register for that webinar. 
So with that, I would like to thank you very much for attending. Um, and I look forward to your feedback. Please feel free to email me at any time as well. And um, Fred, I'm gonna turn it over to you to um, address the first question. It looks like we have about 20 minutes. Thanks, Aaron. So I'll open this to the panel. This is from Mr. Bradley Layton. Uh, Aaron, you mentioned that 1.1 trillion short tons remain in the PRB. What fraction of the original resource remains? And I admit to not knowing this off the top of my head. Um, if any of the panelists want to jump in or any anybody else online, if not, we'd have to look that up on the EIA website, Mr. Layton. I admit to not knowing that number either. Uh, any other panelists? Uh, I don't know the actual number, but I know that the lion's share is is still available and in the ground. We're going with lion's share as a quantity <laughs> for now. We'll have to get back to you. So Aaron, the second question is from Mr. Grant Bromholm, who asks, has the Core CM Group been engaged with the Intermountain West Regional Decarbonization Initiative led by Lanol with participation from Nettle, UW, and others? Are there any plans for coordination collaboration? If not, would you consider it? Maybe that's the Iowa West project, Aaron. Yes, yeah, Scott, could I ask you to address that one? Sure. So yes, University of Wyoming is a partner in the Intermountain West uh, decarbonization project. It's led by Los Alamos National Labs, and it's a regional approach to a, let me back up and say it's focused on place-based technology development to uh, deploy decarbonization in these regions. So yes, we are engaged with that project. And I and I do see a lot of overlap with the Core CM initiative and, and what that project is doing. Thanks, Scott. We have one here from uh, Mr. George Byers, who's a consultant to RER. Uh, and oh, one more thing, uh, Dr. Layton, Mr. Layton, my apologies, thanks for the correction. But last week, the DOE finally transferred their funding for the RE, uh, RE demonstration and separation plant we will build in Upton. Would you contemplate uh, the Upton plan as a destination for unique PRB feedstocks? I certainly, um, yeah, thank you very much for that, for that question. Um, as I mentioned during the presentation, uh, you know, this is largely focused on carbon ore, but we are considering all different types of, of feedstocks and rare earth element and critical mineral resources. So um, the, the, the Bear Lodge complex is a very important consideration in that. So the, the Upton plant is, is certainly an important piece of the puzzle um, for, for basin-wide economics. So, so most definitely that will be on our radar for, for our analyses, um, both in the resource development tasks, as well as the infrastructure and businesses tasks. And if I may add into that, Aaron, um, the waste stream reuse task uh, could match up no matter what you end up doing at Upton. Um, if you generate a waste stream of any sort um, that is useful to another part of the project, it could be one of those puzzle pieces that we study and try to fit together in a uh, convenient and highly efficient way. So there's definitely room in that area. Thank you, Charles. And Fred, do we have any more questions? Not as of yet, Aaron, though we welcome more. I think you're scheduled to 11. Aaron, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So you have a growing team of stakeholders. Can you give us a definition of stakeholder versus project team member um, and just the, the number and kind of um, variety of stakeholders that are out there listening today? Sure. Um, so. Uh, I've, I've kind of def defined our, our project partners as, as those partners who will be actively working on uh, the deliverables and the products that we submit to the Department of Energy and, and disseminate to the to the public. Um, but we have this wider network of stakeholders, and that includes uh, industry, academia, nonprofit organizations, governmental organizations, state geologic surveys. Um, I'm probably I'm probably missing a few here, but it's a very broad network. And what we really want to do with, with that network is, 
is facilitate communication and be able to put those those stakeholders in the room together, uh, figure out where our gaps are in, in the uh, Powder River Basin. And as you can see with this project, it's very broad. Um, so we're looking at all aspects of that supply chain. So we wanna make sure that everyone knows what's going on um, with other entities in the Powder River Basin. Um, so that's, that's the idea behind the broader network of, of stakeholders on this project. All right, Fred, do we have any other additional questions? If, if we do not, we, we certainly welcome questions uh, via email. Um, I'm happy to talk with any of you and also um, would be thrilled to receive your feedback on the survey that we uh, distribute. It looks like we were provided with an answer for the um, resource question. So the, the link is in the question box. Okay, I will uh, put that link into the chat. Uh, which Christine just did. Thank you, Christine. Okay, great. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for providing that. All right, well, I think um, it looks like th those are all of the questions, correct, Fred? Yes, sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, I wanna thank you again all for coming and thank you to the task leads for presenting today. And uh, I look forward to working with all of you on this project.